So that's 36,000 for the year of gross rental income before expenses. And as a soft way of doing it, property management, vacancy rate, utilities, whatever, let's say 50% expenses. So you made $18,000 net profit, right? In your rental income. So what we would do, you got your phone on your calculator? So this is our NOI, net operating income. 18,000 a year off a of two family that's bringing in 1,500 a month from two different units. Cool, so 18,000 divided by 40,000. Yeah, 18,000 divided by 40,000. Right, well no, uh, do it again, I think you hit, hit 400,000. 1,800. 18,000, excuse me, divide them, uh, here you go. My mouse is clicking. Oh, there you go, divide by 40,000. Divide by 40,000. All right, um, and then times 100. I know that's 45%, but yeah, times 100. So, right, that's 45%. I'm gonna come back to that in one second. Now, if you look at 18,000, do it again, 18,000, divided by 200, that's the price you pay for the property, divided by 200, 200,000, yes. So times 100 would be 9%, right? So if you're looking at on the acquisition of the asset, it's a 9% ROI, right, on the 200. But remember, you're financing the majority of it. So forget the whole 200, you're worried about the cash that came out of your pocket, which is uh, the 40,000. Mm -hmm. So out of your cash investment of 40,000, by using leverage, you're actually, based on your net operating income, looking at a 45% ROI, cash on cash ROI. So that's really your biggest number, because now what you're comparing this to even if it was half and it was, you know, 22.5% or whatever, even if it was half this number, what you're looking at is where is my 40,000 sitting right now and what's the ROI is getting me right now, where it's at? And does this number beat that number? So what would you say whenever I'm doing these calculations is like, an ideal ROI range for me to shoot for, for me to know like this is a good number or it's not a good number? I mean, I would just say 10 to 12% is solid ROI. North of that, you're, you're doing really good and doing well. That's ROI over the whole thing or over the even cash Even cash on cash, because it, and, and really it boils down to, again, what this, what this, this is called the opportunity cost of money. It just boils down to 7% might be a great ROI for you. If currently you're only getting one, right? right? So that, that really answers the question. There's somebody else that has a business model right now that's getting them 25%. So if I said 10, they're like, Psh. right? Because they have a better place to park the money. Right. So it all is really relative to where you got your, where you got your capital parked at. So like right now, I dump my excess cash until I can invest it into my life insurance safe tank, which earns at like 9.75 currently. So anything less than that is, is trash to me. Right. And so anything over that, I'm looking at the risk associated with it, and it, is that better for me, anything over that? So again, depending on where you got your money currently parked is depending on how aggressive or what's attractive or what's not attractive in regards to where you go park it next. Right. So that's just relative, really, you know what I mean? But off, off, off a good buy and hold, remember, or buy and hold, you just don't have this net operating income. You also got tax advantages you can use, which will depreciate or deduct your tax liability as a your, your main core thing, being a filmmaker and videographer and running that company. So now you can deduct a lot of the real estate from that earned income, therefore you're paying less in taxes. You're still getting a yearly appreciation as the property goes up in value, not to mention the cash flow. So you're getting like triple bank for your buck, all while just worrying about direct ROI, you're still getting other benefits.
Gotcha.